during the Second World War, there were executions carried out all over the different theatres of the conflict. But some of the worst war crimes were carried out by the Japanese army, and the way they treated some prisoners of war was completely barbaric. Many were forced into conducting backbreaking work on projects such as the Burma Railway, and the conditions that many POWs were kept in were truly awful. One way in which Japan would deal with the enemy airmen was to brutally sentence them to death. Many of these Allied personnel, who had been participating in bombing raids in Japan and their lands, were captured and were sentenced to death and executed. Many were executed in terrible ways, including by sword. But why was this? Join us today as we look at the brutal executions of Allied airmen by the Japanese army. And to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. On the 13th of August 1942, Imperial Japan passed a law and act known as the Enemy Airmen's Act. This was a law that stated that any Allied airmen participating in bombing raids against the Japanese in Japan and also territory occupied by them would be deemed as violators of the law of war, accusing them of being war criminals. This law then meant that they were subject to punishment and trial if captured by the Japanese, and this specific law led to the deaths of hundreds of Allied airmen throughout the Pacific theatre. This law led, after the Second World War had ended, to a number of Japanese officers who had carried out the illegal executions, being sentenced to death themselves for war crimes. One raid on Japan carried out by the United States Air Force was the Doolittle Raid, also known as the Tokyo Raid. It was the first air operation to strike Japanese islands, and despite being minor compared to later raids, it showed the Japanese were vulnerable to air attack. It was done in retaliation for Pearl Harbor, and was made up of 16 B-25B Mitchell medium bombers, and each aircraft had a crew of five, and was launched from the USS Hornet, which was in the Pacific Ocean, just off Japan. The raid killed around 50 people and injured 400 including civilians, but the Doolittle raid had an important psychological effect on the Japanese. In the US it raised morale, but in Japan it increased fear of bombing raids. Of the 16 air crews, 14 complete crews returned. Eight airmen were captured by the Japanese, and three of them were later executed. Those who were captured were sentenced to death at a military trial in China, but five sentences were commuted. The men were kept in terrible conditions, but on the 28th of August 1942, Lieutenant Dean E. Hallmark, Lieutenant William G. Farrow, and Sergeant Harold A. Spatz were put on a show trial, and in accordance with the Allied Airmen's Act, the three were condemned to die. They were advised on the 14th of October 1942 they would be executed the next day. The three Americans were brought by truck to the public cemetery number no. one outside of Shanghai. They were then executed in ceremonial fashion and the procedure of the Japanese military, being shot by a firing squad. The Doolittle raid embarrassed the Japanese military, and a secret military order was stated that an enemy warplane crew who did violate wartime international law should be treated as prisoners of war, and one who acted against the said law shall be punished as a wartime capital crime. The supreme commander of the Japanese forces in China would also agree to this, and the Enemy's Airmen's Act was passed. This did have different elements to it, and it said, Article 1, this law shall apply to all enemy airmen who raid the Japanese homeland, Manchukuo, and the Japanese zones of military operation, and who come within the areas under the jurisdiction of China Expeditionary Force. Article 2. Any individual who commits any or all of the following shall be subject to military punishment. Section 1. The bombing, strafing and otherwise attacking of civilians, with the objective of intimidating, killing or maiming them. Section 2. The bombing, strafing or otherwise attacking of private properties, whatsoever with the objective of destroying them. Section 3. The bombing, strafing or otherwise attacking of objectives, other than those of a military nature, except in those cases where such an act is unavoidable. Section 4. In addition to those acts covered in the preceding three sections, all other acts violating the provisions of international law governing warfare. Article 3. Military punishment shall be the death penalty, or life imprisonment, or a term of imprisonment, for not less than 10 years. This military law shall be applicable to all acts committed prior to the date of its approval. This law led to large amounts of Allied casualties and airmen being executed by the Japanese. News of the executions of the free airmen of the Doolittle Raid led to huge amounts of anger in America, and President Roosevelt condemned the Japanese claiming they were depraved war criminals and were barbarous.
uproar also reached London and was angered by the British. And with this, the Americans really began to hate the Japanese. And this did cause tension for those Japanese people living inside of America. There were countless executions of Allied airmen, who were captured following their attacks on Japanese-held lands, and many of these were performed in public, and with immense brutality. One example is the Chichijima incident, which took place in late 1944. In this, the Japanese killed eight Americans in the Bonin Islands, and then treated their remains terribly. Nine airmen escaped from their planes after being shot down during the bombing raids, and eight of them were captured. The ninth managed to evade capture, and was incredibly the future president, George H.W. Bush, a 20-year-old pilot at the time. The captured men were tortured and beaten, and then were executed on the orders of Lieutenant General Tachibana. The men were led into a public area before they were beheaded by sword. Allegedly, the Japanese then ate parts of their bodies of four of the men. Further executions continued in the Pacific Theatre. On the 16th of March 1945, 331 B-29 bombers attacked the Japanese city of Kobe as part of strategic firebombing raids on the city. It resulted in almost 9,000 Japanese residents being killed in the firestorms, which destroyed 20% of the city. During the attack, three B-29s were shot down and lost. Two airmen were captured by the Japanese after they survived being shot down. They were taken to the Osaka military prison and were tortured before they were then sentenced to death. They had been found guilty of indiscriminate bombing and the pair were then taken to a place of execution. One of the men, Sergeant Organus, stated, I don't hate none of you because you did your duty as I did my duty. Only what I want to say is that this damn war will be over soon and there will be peace forever. That is all. After attempting to behead the pair, the Japanese then had to switch, execution methods shooting the Americans in the head as the sword method was botched. 132 Allied airmen who were shot down during bombing raids on Japan in the final two years of the war were executed following trials. Some were even not subject to trial, and a number were deliberately killed, including 32, in Fukuoka. Fifteen of these were beheaded after it was announced by the Japanese government that they intended to surrender. Japanese civilians also attacked several Allied airmen before they could be taken into custody, and for this a number of mobs killed the men. Also another 94 airmen died from other causes, such as succumbing to injuries, and 52 were killed when they were deliberately left inside a prison by the Japanese, as Tokyo was bombed on the 24th and 25th of May 1945. In July 1945, a flight of B-24 aircraft went on a bombing mission in Singapore, and one aircraft was shot down. Seven survivors were picked up by two ships, and were brought to a naval base, and then weeks later the men were executed. After the war had come to an end, the Allied occupation then switched to bringing many of the Japanese officers who had conducted the trials and illegal executions under the Enemy Examens Act to justice. They brought a number to trial, and during one trial of Lieutenant Commander Okamoto, he was accused of ordering the executions of American airmen in Singapore. Information came out that the pilots were taken to a naval base, and then split up into two groups. Following being loaded onto a truck, the men were executed by Japanese sailors, allegedly by beheading. The Enemy Airmen's Act was a piece of legislation enacted by the Japanese to target those men who were bombing Japanese settlements. It resulted in the executions of hundreds of Allied airmen who fell into captivity, and many of the executions ordered were carried out by sword and were done in public. These stories helped to make the Japanese incredibly feared, and their war crimes were later attempted to be punished. But hundreds of Allied airmen were executed when they should have been considered prisoners of war, and probably kept in prison during the duration of the war, but many prisoners would be kept in horrifying conditions that would haunt them until the day they died. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.